Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here recording as I was due in Nashville, Tennessee. The entrance to Red Sky Bay is looking better than ever, but you know what? No man is an island, and I'm not going to try to prove myself the exception to that rule. I'll let the evidence speak for itself. What I need to do right now is go contribute to the community area. Scar has something super secret planned. He's going to be announcing it soon, but he needs a little help. And you know what? I make time for a little help for my friends. So, let's go! Diamond pickaxe. That's gonna really bother somebody. I don't know who it's gonna really bother, but I love it. It's, so we have good times, great scaries, good picks with scar, and diamond pickaxe. Scarred for life. Boom. Four diamond pickaxes ready to go to our good friend, good times with scar. Do I not have my crosshairs on? Silly me. Now let's go ahead and hop up here. Oh, did I... What? Okay, that's new. That is... Did you guys see that? Where are my coordinates now? Did I just do a, a ender pearl coordinate trick? It took me down to level 35 at 100th... Oh, guys, I just did a teleporter. I just did a teleport bug. I just did a teleport bug. And actually, conveniently, this took me exactly back to spawn. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, so I teleported, I threw the ender pearl through, through the ender, or through the nether portal. And so it divided by eight, but it didn't switch my dimension. So that means, coincidentally, I, I happened to put my, uh, my exit portal for my uh, location at eight times the distance from spawn. So if I can get to the surface, I'm actually gonna be in the right place at the right time without going through the nether. Although this tunnel doesn't seem to connect anywhere. There's gotta be a way up, because somebody dug it out. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, that's all dark down there. I'm not sure how much I love that. I mean, there could be creepers and stuff, but I mean, sometimes you gotta go down to get out. So somebody built this wall. Is this the exit? Dang it. Clearly a uh, spawner is through here. Let's make sure that's well lit. Oh, wait, no, this might be the stairs. Boom. And look where I came out, right next to here. Right next to my beautiful skylight that people have for some reason covered up. Dang it. It's not a skylight if you can't see the sky, guys. Well, I guess you can kind of see the sky. So... Here we are, to the nether, or we bypassed the nether successfully by throwing a single pearl. Okay, so here's good times with Skull. We are going to come visit him real quick and put a box down, like, right here. And put good times, great scaries, good picks with scar. Diamond pickaxe and scarred for life right there, as well as three blocks of iron. And we'll have a little sign here that says, Good luck with the ground breaking. And then we'll just torch that up. So now I've ruined his video by Scar. Looking forward to helping with the uh, actual project once we can do that in public. I can't stream anything working on the project yet because it is top secret. But Whoa, here we go. Oh, and apparently a second ender pearl I threw came out here. So when I went in the portal, maybe what actually happened is I had two nether, two ender pearls in the air at once, and one of them somehow glitched through one portal, and the other one came out here. Because this, I just went through the portal at spawn. This is not clever video editing, and it just took me straight to my bay. I've had weird stuff like that before, where when you throw a pearl through a portal, it gets, like, suspended animation-aided. And then it hits when you reload the chunk. So I've managed to shave a ton of distance 
off my travel both ways. This was actually a really effective way to get through. So, huh. That's a, a fun accident about where I've got my portal set up, and I'm happy for it. Welcome to my architectural lab. What I'm planning to do here is to establish the facades, kind of detail-focused elements, in this secure, safe space before moving out there and actually applying them in the real world, building buildings into the sides of the bay. Now, for example, when I'm thinking about what I want these buildings to look like, I gotta keep in mind, Minecraft has like different kinds of doors now. You know, they used to just have the one, but now they have a ton. So, I gotta figure out like, okay, when is it appropriate to use a birch door? How do I feel about how the birch double door looks in relation to like, ooh, that's not good. That's like opposite. Yeah, there we go. Better. How do I feel about that versus that? Or when do I want to use, let's come over here to our crafting bench, a spruce door. Like, what does a spruce door look like? Well, actually, I've got a few of those downstairs. And so I have a pretty good idea of what they look like. But still, it's good to know, it's okay, it's got this little iron hook here. So maybe if I'm going to use these on something, I want other elements like stone or gray concrete that kind of fit with those colors well. And here's an oak door, you know, old reliable, which has these nice windows in it, which are valuable for seeing through, but aren't necessarily as uh, decorative as something like this. So I see something like this, and I think, okay, I want to pair that with stone because of the accent color. Whereas I look at the birch here, and I see these little dark brown accents. And I think, maybe I should pair these with something that's in that part of the uh, kind of hue spectrum. So, like, maybe combining spruce wood logs. See how that kind of fits well there? Those look like they're intentionally, like, hinged on there. That kind of gives it a nice look and feel, or a log and feel, if you will. Now, I can also start saying, like, well, what do I want to have above my doorways? You know, so this is an interesting double doorway kind of post system, but, you know, it's not called a post. It's called a post and lintel. And I need to think lintelligently about how I want that to look. Just looking at this, though, I'm kind of thinking, what if I play with a little bit of diorite? Because diorite's everyone's favorite, right? How, how would that go? We've got white here in the door, and then we got white here on the diorite. You know what? It's actually a terrible pairing, because the diorite is a cool white and a cool gray, which is like more blue, and the door is a warmer, redder gray and white. So actually that causes a dissonance that we do not want to experience. So what if we try something a little redder? Like if we come in here and we've got kind of granite across the top. That actually doesn't conflict as much. Now I'd want to be careful and thoughtful about how I did other parts, but like having, you know, granite alongside, or like along the base here, with then maybe something like birch planks next to windows. Let, let's give that a go. All right, so if we look at something like this, we've kind of got the granite element mixed in here, both across the top and on the sides. I almost think, though, it might be more interesting to have the complementary unfinished granite kind of shaping this, this foundation. The idea is that the lowest part of this doesn't need the level of refinement that a lintel would need, right? So then we grab our birch wood, which is going to complement these doors, and we toss it here to here, here and here, here and here. Then we can come in and set up windows like this, and possibly even cap them with their own polished granite. And these would actually be stairs if this was a real roof, but we're just trying to get a sense of the color. Like, would the nether brick work here as a colored roof? It would. You know, it's funny, when I started laying out the grid for this floor, I really liked the idea of just having the glass. I didn't think of it as a grid. But now that I'm seeing these blue lines here, I'm almost thinking of this as like my personal hollow deck. And then I was like, it should be called a Jolo deck. And then I thought one step further, guys. What if it's a Yolo deck? Because you only live once. Unlike the real holodeck, which will actually also kill you. So do not die in the holodeck. Don't die in here either. 
Anyway, welcome to the Jolo deck. As you can see, we've got our palette here of what we were thinking about using for our house construction. This is entirely too flat, you know? It's just to give us a sense of what colors we might use that might work well together. And some general shapes, but not necessarily the overall structure. So, sometimes you t got to take an idea like that and push past it. So let's do that now. So we've got this with a little bit of more 3D elements, roof popping out, doors recessed, window panes, kind of some stairs in here. I'm not sure if I like this or not with the stairs, but I think it works. But you know, you got to go further and further until you get to here. Something else, but even better. Now, I don't know what that something else is exactly, but if we take a second and look at what we've got here, okay, this bay window, it kind of works. Having the sideways door does make kind of some sense in a cliffside community because you get a little bit more shelter from any storms or whatever, but really, you know, big windows facing out and things like that, those are likely to be like a sail area when you get a lot of strong winds. If we're building along this coast, we got to think about these buildings not being ripped down just by sheer force of wind. So we got to think about that. Also, in a lot of coastal communities, they like to have really tall windows. So in all three of these prototypes, we've got these windows that are the same heights as the doors. They might be at varying levels in relation to the door. They might be varying widths. But you know, I think this is the right height for a bay window. But if we really wanted to have like a series of windows that looks like they belong in a coastal community, we got to get a little bit more creative with it. So like if I come through here, and I got to say, I do like these wooden beams on the outside here, but they almost feel like these sorts of pillar beams are great for when you're building in a plains environment. But when you're building into a coast, you don't drive, like, logs. You don't drive staves or trees or trunks or whatever into the ground. Because the ground looks like that. That is not a tree trunk friendly environment. Stay away, tiny elephant. So, what we will do is let's experiment with an alternate cornering method away from those logs. Maybe those logs still have, maybe those logs should serve as the cross beams here. As you can see, I've used kind of the square and a side as these cross beams, but really, I'm thinking on a building that should be storm swept on occasion. We might even go and take those andesite squares or the polished andesite and use those as kind of cornerstones. And okay, so boom. Torch, I'm sorry, but the builder rejected you. Cornerstone, you're in. That looks kind of bitter. Not great. I mean, it's still, you know, granite. And you don't want to take that for granted. Whoops, that was poor usage. But let's go ahead and try a few taller windows. Let's use the panes, because we got a few of those. So those high windows feel like they belong a little bit more. And if we take the uh, take the spruce wood now and do the cross beam, that might feel or look a little bit more appropriate. It might also be interesting to fit the spruce on the bottom of the windows, but I feel like that will hurt the the sense of permanence. Like, the idea is that maybe these foundations of these homes are older than the homes themselves. Like, this granite part has been here forever, and every so often, every few years, there's a bad storm, wrecks up the windows, or rips out a wall here, and then they replace it. So, have first draft, second draft, third draft, fourth iteration, it's got windows, it's got a door, it doesn't have a roof, it doesn't have a floor, but this foundation makes me think that there's more to this building from the past, and that this building may have been incrementally improved, but that the base was built to last. And what is this about? I want to have a good base. I'm all about that base. But before we drop this building on our base, we need to go and grab a place to put it. I'm thinking in general, just kind of somewhere along the cliffs. Like, I'm not too picky at this point. I'm going to have buildings to store rocks and buildings to store redstone stuff and buildings to store everything. And they don't all need to be perfect on the inside yet. But if I don't just start placing them down, I'm never going to get any of them used. So let us go ahead, grab the materials we need, and scout out a place to put this, our, our first piece of our first building. And we'll take ideas that we like from the rest of it. 
like the bay window and incorporate this possibly into other sides or other pieces of it. But we need to just get something attached to a cliff face. Or we're going to spend all our time in the YOLO deck. Like ends in... No, Lieutenant Barclay. He would be so upset if you called him Ensign Barclay. Never call an officer by the wrong rank. That is just like military etiquette 101. A 101. They're very binary there. Anyway, time skip. So as much as I love the idea of having some sort of boardwalk and some kind of constructed buildings jutting out into the bay on logs driven into the bay and having more buildings up around a public square there, I want to have my first building really have a, a good view from the entrance of the bay to the entrance of the bay. I want the sign in there. So I'm thinking, let's come over here. I scouted this location out briefly, and I realized this is the perfect place to kind of dig into this hill. Or not dig, but like build on top of it. And have this kind of plateau here serve as a table for the meal that we are about to serve. So it's double service. Anyway, this could be a dock. I put in some logs here in a way that I think is kind of visually going to work. Once I put some slabs in, it'll be more docky than ever. We can put a little tiny stairwell up here, you know, like a little hermit stair. Realistically, a house like this is not going to be visited all the time. This is a house for the owner, you know, who might go into town occasionally via their little boat over to there once we get the town in. But, you know, this is, this is a house, somebody who, who works on a boat all day, and can leave via boat easily. So I started kind of figuring out that the footprint of it should kind of match the table of the stone structure itself. Put in some rough cornerstones. I think that they're going to generally be pretty okay. Let's go ahead and grab some more cornerstones and some more sidewalls here. I think it might be interesting to have a basement story that faces out into this little valley and maybe set up a garden here in the long term. Not sure exactly what this wall in between these two posts would look like. It might be birch, unlike these sides, which are going to be andesite, or not andesite, granite, until they hit the bottom. So we'll just kind of have the granite hug the stone here. So you can see how there's like clear lines where this was built on top of something else. We'll take the dirt in the long term and probably replace that with stone blocks for optimal look and feel. And... Just kind of play with it a little bit. Say, dang it, I'm on the wrong side of this cliff, and it's getting dark. You know what? You know how many torches I put down so far here? I put down four torches. Right here. You know how many torches I have in the actual build site? Zero. So well, let's go ahead and rectify that. We're going to light up our stairs first. That's a major safety faux pas if you don't have your stairs lit. Then we're going to light up a little bit right here. A little bit right here to discourage creepers spawning. Maybe, maybe a bit here. Or maybe a smidge there. Just gonna dapple this area over here with torchlight as well. Just for the experience. You know, it's, it's just so good to lay claim to uh, a new area. To bring it into the light of whatever this is. Torch charcoal. So for right now, let's go ahead and get one torch on top of each of these little kind of side things. Boom. Okay, so we are unlikely to imminently die due to mobs. If mobs were going to come at us, they would be probably come down off this hill, off this cliff here. So I think that this is the first area that I should come in and start kind of, you know, walling off. That that makes sense to me. Well, the fr the approach certainly leaves much to be desired given the zombie, the unfinished dock and the unfinished stairs as well as the lack of a front porch to speak of. That's a bit of a front porch. But you know what? I realized if I come in, I can kind of do something like this with the stairs, have an upstairs area with like a loft and a bedroom, kind of come down here, don't have all the floor in yet, kind of develop this out here, have a nice little, uh, what do you call this thing? I guess you'd call it a deck or a patio, that sort of thing. I might even go ahead, so I'm, gonna, I'm thinking I'll have the roof extend out over the deck. That should work well. So one thing I kind of like the idea of is even raising the floor level across here, kind of like this, not that far, but like, so when you come in, you've got kind of a, hey, you're inside now feel, but then we go up to here, whoops, and kind of the same here. 
I'm guessing I'm going to need my downward stairs to go actually right here anyway. If I'm going to have them be, like, logically, in a lot of houses, the stairs down are under the stairs up. So I might mine a stairwell into this side that would lead... Whoops. Probably going to replace these with actual, you know, good stairs anyway, down the line, but... But having stairs that get led from down here out into this lower guard alley area. So we can just punch straight through like so, and we should hit daylight. Okay, yeah, this is perfect. So I could have a little chicken pen, a little garden down here. From the garden you can see the sign a little bit in the background. It's a good it's a good location. I can't I can't complain. Now this is probably a little bit design breaking compared to what we had in the YOLO lab or YOLO deck or, or whatever, JOLO deck. But I think having the big window with the big view of the sign is going to actually make this a more enjoyable place to use. Like, when I started on this, I was originally thinking like, oh, I'll just put a facade of a house against a cliff and then I'll store cobblestone in it or something. But now that I'm actually starting to build it, I'm like, oh, I like this house. Maybe this is going to be my main house in the base. I mean, I'm still going to build all the other houses and use them for storage. I'm going to end up with like 15 houses, and I'm going to love them all so much. They'll be like my children. It'll be adorable. But no, um, I actually really do like how this is coming out. Garden down here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Hey, chicken, you good? If we can get to our boat, we can kind of get a look at it from an external angle. Let's take a look. The building is not particularly inspiring from this side in that it is missing a wall right here. But that big window is going to look nice. Once we get more of the granite in place, that should look good too. This wall here doesn't look too bad, although I'm wishing I had a little bit more symmetry with the windows in some ways, but it's good to not have everything always be perfectly symmetrical. I just don't know if I love how close that granite block is there to that window. I might even get rid of it and just have it be offset a little bit, depending on how claustrophobic that makes the space feel. Now, I'm going to run into my base and see if I have any more granite I can grab real quick. Time skip. So, if we just come through here, we now have windows that look like they go with each other. We have a big view of the bay sign. We have a place to put a stairwell down. We have a little patio area, which is incredibly unsafe. Anybody could just fall off this into a boat and then escape with all my gems. Oh, wait, I don't have any. And I gave him to Scar for his big secret project, which you guys can definitely find out more about if you saw the beginning of this episode. You'll know that it is starting very soon. By the time this episode is live, you guys could probably find out exactly what it is. But sometimes I gotta keep these things under my hat, just in case there's any last minute changes. We're gonna sail out here into the bay, say hi to our bay bay zombie, and then we're gonna come back this way and take a look at how this house looks. Yeah, once we get the glass in for those windows, that's going to look a lot better there. That's, uh, it's going to have the roof. The patio is going to need a support or two to, like, make it feel like it holds up better. But it definitely feels like it was built onto the rock, which is good. So, not a bad start. We went from picking colors and looking at doors to a first story basically framed in one episode. I'm pretty proud of it. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.